Hello and welcome to the new video from City Ink Express. Uh, today we're going to be fitting the continuous ink system to the new Epson XP202. So the fit method is the same as the XP205. So at the moment the, uh, I've got the printer powered on uh, and at the moment there's, there's no ink cartridges in it but I'm going to press the ink cartridge change button to get the print head to come over to the middle. So when the print head comes over to the middle you need to power the printer down at the wall uh, and I'll explain to you in a second why. Right, so I've powered the printer down at the wall, that bit's quite important. Uh, so when the printer's powered down it will allow you to freely move this print head. When the printer's switched on it will be locked into position. So I've moved the cartridge bay over to the right hand side so I can get my cartridge block in there. So we're going to install uh, the continuous ink system now. So for the cartridge block itself, you'll notice on the cartridge block there are four little lugs here, all four, and there's a little lip on there. So we've got some secondary checks to do once the system's installed, uh, which involves put, pushing diagonally down on these locating lugs. If they're not, if that lip's not clicked in underneath the printer, uh, it will just say that it's not recognised when you fire the system up. So I'm going to pop the cartridge block into the printer. And I'm going to press down firmly on the top of each one. Now when you finish you need to push diagonally down on these locating logs. So let's just recreate one. So I'll push the cartridge block down and you think it's in. But, but, but actually if you listen for this click. One there. Let's just recreate another one so you can hear that. Can you hear that? So basically if that is not if that is not locating lug it's not clicked in underneath the lid it will just say that it's not recognized so just go over them a couple of times push down firmly and make sure that all the locating lugs are firmly into place so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install uh, the grey arm so for on the continuous ink system you have this grey arm now I've already removed the green backing tape from this now you will have some green backing tape on it so remove that and then it gets attached over here on the right with the second sticker right up towards the edge and you're just going to push firmly down now what you should have uh, on your continuous ink system which you should need to check you need to check that you've got a nice straight loop coming off the end of the clamp here so there should be no twists, no kinks, no turns. Well, there's just one turn here, but there certainly shouldn't be any twists or kinks at all on the incline because that will cause problems. So you should have a nice loop here coming off like that. So we need to manually slide the print head now over to the left-hand side. And what you're actually checking when you do this is that this incline here should be a little bit tight. If it's too loose, it makes a bigger loop here which can tap on the underside of the lid. Well, it, it makes it magnifies, it makes it louder. Uh, so, so, yeah, and then if it's too tight, it won't reach the far left. So they are set at the factory, but if you ever need to adjust an incline, you just simply hold this clamp and then you'll either pull it with this hand, the whole incline while holding, which will make it shorter, or you can push the incline through, which will make this loop uh, bigger so that it can reach the far left. So just manually slide it backwards and forwards a couple of times to make sure that you're happy with it. So I'm going to power the printer on now. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll do uh, a nozzle check result and see if we've got to do any head cleans. Sometimes you, sometimes you can get away without doing head cleans and then other times sometimes you, you have to do a couple of head cleans. Now while it's doing that let's just have a look at the continuous ink system itself. So on top of the continuous ink system you need to remove the four small flat plugs. So underneath these is an air balance chamber uh, which we need to uh, fit some air filters to which will help the system breathe. So in your accessory pack you get some air filters that look like this and they need to be installed with a narrow pointed end facing up. When you look at them, one's got a stubby fat end and one's got a thin end. So you just need to install all of those with a narrow pointed end facing upwards. And then I'm going to pop this continuous ink system, I'll come back to that in a bit, over on the right hand side. So I've powered the printer on, now it will know you're using non-genuines and it, it may say on your computer that you're using non-genuines, you need, just need to click yes to accept that. So the ink cartridge light is on at the moment, so what we need to do is you need to press the ink cartridge change button. <coughs> 
what it'll do, it'll come over to the middle here, it's signalling that the black's not recognised. So you need to press the reset button a couple of seconds and then press it. It'll move to the next colour, two, and then it, the next colour, three, and then onto the sign finally. And then it'll move over here and you'll have to do it one more time. And that's it. So once I've pressed that, the ink light's gone off, look, and then basically just press that and the ink cartridges will then be recognised. So if you've done that and it's still not recognised, it's worth checking actually are you locating lugs incorrectly, uh, or are they incorrect, sorry. Uh, yeah, so that's all installed now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run uh, a nozzle check print and see have we actually got to do any head cleans before... Uh, before we can run some sample prints off. So I'm just going to select the printer now. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. That one there. Options. So I've told it to print uh, a nozzle check test print and uh, we'll wait for that to come out uh, which it may decide to do a cleaning cycle first time round which is quite common. So let's talk about the continuous ink system. So the continuous ink system itself, uh, it can go on the right hand side of the printer or the ink line is long enough for it to reach around the back of the printer. So the size you need, you need a 105mm square foot plate for the continuous ink system to be sat at the side and like I said if you haven't got room it can go around the back. So it's quite important with the continuous ink systems that they are sat at the same level as the base of the printer. They must never be raised in the air. If you raise a continuous ink system in the air the contents of the system will empty into the bottom of your printer so as long as it's sat on the same level as the base of the printer it's going to be perfectly fine you'll have no problems at all so just remember that one same level as the base of the printer <coughs> so I'm just going back to the uh, printer so what it's doing now is uh, it, because we've put a different kind of aftermarket product in magic does it with originals anyway but basically because we've put a different uh, a new setting uh, and we're doing a nozzle check, he wants to go through a cleaning and a purging cycle first time round, which quite often can take uh, a couple of minutes to run. So actually installing of the continuous ink system, uh, we have, you know, it literally takes maybe five minutes, ten minutes to install. The rest of the time is taken up by me talking and uh, nozzle checks and that. So what we found with the XP range uh, of printers, we pretty much cross them all, is that Sometimes the nozzle check result is not reflective of the print quality that you can get. So if you take a look at this one here, which was done on a different XP printer, you would see oh, there's a small, small, small missing part in the magenta and a missing part in the sign. Now we'd already done one head clean and chosen not to do any more. Uh, and the print, the perfect, the print that we got from that was perfect. So sometimes with nozzle checking, the worst thing you can do with head cleans is to sit there cleaning and cleaning. We always say maximum of two to three head cleans but you know do a print you know what's your print like does it reflect the nozzle check because most of the time that we found uh, it's not always reflective of that so yeah two to three head cleans maximum if you're still having an issue or you're using a different type of ink or whatever just leave it let it settle down for 10 minutes and then come back and it'll be perfectly fine so it's still running through its cleaning cycle now so I'm just basically I'm just going to have to wait for this to finish uh, hopefully to keep the video time down I won't have to do any uh, do any more but we'll see so just bear with me I'm just waiting for the printer now <laughs> so yeah it's uh, it's still it's still cleaning doing its print head clean and we're just going to have to wait for a second once this is finished it's clean we'll do uh, we'll run a print off and I'll show it you with the uh, 
working with the lid open and then the lid closed just so you can see how it runs. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm just waiting for this to finish. This is a bit oh, I hate on the videos that uh, you know it just just extends it by minutes really. And uh, we don't do cutting, cutting and pasting on videos. We just video it from start to finish straight through. So if we run into any problems, that uh, the customers can can see that as well. So what it's indicating to me now, uh, it's indicating that one of the cartridges is not recognised. So I'm going to press the ink cartridge button. And it can happen. It can happen sometimes. So that's fine. So it's gone straight to straight to the magenta. So I'm going to press the reset button, uh, and then it's gone back straight to that, and then it's finished. hoping it's not going to run through a whole purging cycle again it will just print my document off. Yeah, so you, unfortunately it's running through its cleaning cycle again, so you're just going to have to bear with me for a second on this one. This is a bit I hate on the videos when you're doing them, when things don't always go right or it has to do a multiple head clean.
I said it's finally woke up. It's got one more to print and then it's going to start printing my picture. So that's how it runs with the lid open. Now obviously for you when you're uh, running it you're going to have the lid closed. I'll let it carry on printing in a second uh, and then I'll close the lid just so you can see how it's running. So that is how it runs. Now you will hear, let's just close that, you will hear that that tapping noise. Now that tapping noise is caused by the incline tapping underneath the bottom of the lid. Now there is can hear that. Now there is, there is no way around that. We basically, we haven't found an alternative fit method. I think every time Epson design new printers, you know, they're building into the printers to stop these aftermarket products, whether it's compatible, sissies, refillable. So you just basically have to find the best fit method, a workaround, uh, to, to, in order to offer you guys basically cheap running costs. Sometimes that, yeah, sometimes that, that means that, you know, you have to live with something like that but you know if you ever see any other videos online for the XP202 you know they won't show the lid closed because they don't want you to hear that that tiny little noise but you know we've we've been on this for a week we've tried various different fit methods uh, the company in the States also already released this one exactly the same method, fit method I think they have a t-bar over the middle but you still end up with that tiny little knocking noise so you just have to live with that there's no other method so uh, that's how it runs with the lid open. I'm not going to let the document print fully because it's a six minute document uh, and we're already up to 17 minutes on this video. So that's how you install the continuous ink system from City Ink Express on the XP202 and the XP205. Thank you.